I just remember being like, God, I don't want to give you my life. I want to quit all this addiction, all this darkness, all this depression, all this anger I've known for so long. God, I don't want to, but I can't. I literally was like, I'd been in addiction for over 11 years at this point. So I just was being honest. I was mm -hmm. like, God, I don't want to, but there's no way. Then in a thought more powerful than words, <laughs> the Holy Spirit spoke something into me that changed me for the rest of my life. He was like, Stephen, you won't do it. I'll do it. For people who don't know, because your big splash, at least for Caleb, has been your song, Come Jesus Come. Yeah. But on social media, people have been getting to know your story yeah. in a much deeper level. So for those who don't know, can you give me the quick catch up? People know who, who is Stephen McWhorter? Yeah, I'll do the elevator pitch but the we're stuck in an elevator pitch how about that Give it to me. <laughs> uh yeah i was like an evangelist son man and i grew up in church camp and i would see my dad get up and preach about jesus then behind closed doors i would see a totally different person i'd literally see him go out and preach and then physically abuse my mom at home and i said you know what if god's real i don't want anything to do with him or this jesus guy my earthly father and god became the villains to my yeah. story, you know what I mean? So at like 11 and 13, I was smoking, drinking, marijuana, 15, it's cocaine, pills, I'm selling drugs. Uh, you know, by 17, I'm a full out crystal meth addict. I'm using crystal meth for over six years. Wow. Um, I'm in a gang. No, I'm not in a gang. Sorry, I just felt like I should Whoa, keep going. You know? I mean, I killed six people. Wow, barely, no, by 21, I had a teardrop tattoo. <laughs> yeah, these are all people. These oh, tattoos. No, no, I'm just no. kidding. No, no, uh, no. But I, for real, I mean, during this time, man, I was the guy who hated Christianity, like loathed it. Two things would happen if you mentioned the name Jesus around me. I was either gonna cuss you out or try to knock you out. I say try because I weighed like a hundred pounds because I was on meth. So if I threw my whole body at you, you might have been like a paper cut. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I just remember people were praying for me, you know, um, really praying for me. And somebody came and gave me this book called The Case for Christ yeah. by Lee Strobel, yeah. um, which is awesome. Check it out. Um, you know, they gave me this book and I miraculously accepted it because imagine inviting the person that you know that hates Christianity. Like, you're just, like, even scared to even talk to them about it, mm -hmm. to church. And they go, cool, I'll come. You know? <laughs> it's like this was the parting the Red Sea moment for me because I accepted this book without causing a scene. I was just like, cool, whatever. Put it on a side table. Fast forward, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. There's drugs on that side table. Nobody's playing softly and quietly a harp in the corner. Yeah. It's, like, seemingly the most impossible place for somebody to get saved. And we begin to have this internal dialogue. Me and the Lord, he's like, I'm real, I'm good, I have a purpose for your life. What are you going to do about it? And I just remember being like, God, I want to give you my life. I want to quit all this addiction, all this darkness, all this depression, all this anger I've known for so long. God, I don't want to, but I can't. I literally was like, I'd been in addiction for over 11 years at this point. And so I just was being honest. I was mm -hmm. like, God, I don't want to, but there's no way. Then in a thought more powerful than words, <laughs> The Holy Spirit spoke something into me that changed me for the rest of my life. He was like, Stephen, you won't do it. I'll do it. And it's mm -hmm. that like Ephesians, you know, you're saved by grace. This isn't something you can boast about. It's a work of God. Yeah. But there is a work that the Father asks of us. It says in John, the only work he asks of us is to believe. So that's what I did. I believed him like I believe I'm breathing air right now. <sighs> And I fell to my knees. I gave my life to Jesus in a room on the floor. Boogers coming out of my nose. <laughs> ugly yeah. crying. Yeah. Wow. And I went from addiction to redemption because honestly, the short thing is God's real. It's all real. And that was it. No looking back. 20 years later, here I am. You know? And in that moment, like you just took that. How do you go from being addicted for 11 years? Mm -hmm. Was it just an instant addiction broken? Well, or was there yeah, I actually quit everything. So here's the deal. Let me say this really clearly. I quit everything overnight. Wow. And you can take it up. With, if you don't like it, take it up with Jesus when you get to heaven. But uh, <laughs> no, you know, I quit everything overnight. And I'll say this for people that hear that and get discouraged, you know, 
Plus, don't worry, there was plenty more screwed up things with me to work on for years to come, you know? <laughs> but I had a willpower that I promise you was not mine. Yeah. And be encouraged, though, if you hear that, because in the Gospels, Jesus never heals anyone the same way twice. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because every story has a purpose. If it takes five times, ten times, and you fall at his knees and you mean it, you fall at his feet, rather, and you mean it, he's going to use your story to change people's lives. For people who struggle with the going back mm-hmm. and they've, they've gone through an addiction, they feel like they haven't changed yet, like, how did you stay away? Because I'm sure you still saw it. Like, you knew Look, what existed and where it existed and how yeah. to get it. How did you stay away Look, and keep on the right road? When you experience, like, the, what I experienced, which I'm just totally honest. Uh-huh. I mean, it's not about me. I'm not... I don't consider myself charismatic. I don't consider myself conservative. I'm just like, God's real. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, and I experienced the real thing. And I just remember being like, this wasn't like somebody sat down and told me, this is why you should believe Christianity. No, I like, I know he's real. Yeah. And I left that room going to all of my attic buddies going, God's real. Oh my gosh, it's all real. And they're like, are you high? (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) And, Truth is, people just disappear when you do that. Yeah. Or some change. So, hearing uh, your story, the word that comes into my mind over and over again is miracle. Like, a miracle is standing right here in front of me. Yeah. How did you go? So, the addiction and God, He was redemption and you had a relationship with Him. How did music get into the mix? Oh, well, I've been. Since I was a little kid, ironically, I'm bald now, but I was singing into hairbrushes when I was a little kid. So, I mean, like, I've always. This sounds like, I don't say this a lot because it sounds like pretentious, but McQuarter literally in the Scottish means um, son of the harpist. And like, it's literally in my DNA. And for people that hear that, if your last name's son of the door maker, I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> well, son Jesus of the was trash a picker so, upper. I mean, no. I uh, but honestly, if you hear that, it's like, I believe God's like spoken your destiny into you before you were even born. And sometimes in life, like I remember being a teenager and I just thought I wanted to be a rock star. I was in metal bands, but see, that was like the broken lens. You know, when you start to actually go, God, what have you put in me for what purpose? And sometimes those desires that we think are bad, if we get to the pure core of them, we find out there's something there that God put in us that's part of our destiny. And it's always going to reflect his glory. So... Something I've enjoyed watching you, especially on social media, you're like, this is not about me. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. Like, I'm just making videos. I want you to know I love Jesus, that Jesus is real. And your song, Come Jesus Come, has got like, what, tens of millions of views now. It's crazy. What has that been like? Um, honestly, I, you know, again, I always say to people, I'm not 25. Um, I feel like I'm in a really yeah, good You're not spot. the key TikTok demo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's part of it. I think your character has to be ready for your destiny. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. God takes his time because if your character's not ready, you're going to make yourself and a lot of people around you very miserable. And he loves you too much to do that. So I think he knew when it was time for me so that I could be a good, well, not a perfect steward, <laughs> but a good steward of what he's called me to. So every day that something happens, like I just go, okay, this is how do I just love people? with this, not build a brand, not get people to buy something, not get people to follow me, but actually just love them and share the gospel. And then, you know, build the kingdom, not a platform, and then trust him with the outcome. That's literally been it. It's it's, you and I both know from social media and all this kind of stuff, there's some learning involved, but that core factor, that core thing has to be in place or else you're operating out of your own steam, out of your own, like, knowledge and it's going to feel like an uphill battle yeah but what's amazing though the outcome like tens of thousands of people through those things that you've been doing on social media have come to know jesus ah yeah so when come jesus come came out on tiki talk <laughs> i feel like every time i say tiki talk there's a six-year-old somewhere that's like there's a disturbance in the force <laughs> yeah. we should yeah. all leave this platform right now uh no you know when i when i got on TikTok and i started sharing Come Jesus, come. This was like last year, which by the way, at that time, the song was two years old. Really? Yeah. So people writing songs out there, you put it out and you go, oh, that didn't work. God's timing is not your timing. Yeah. <laughs> and you never know when he's going to breathe on something, what he's going to do. That's, that's part of like being able to like partner with him and just 
be patient, you know? Um, so we, I put it on TikTok though, and it goes viral. So we can start going live. If you know anything about TikTok, you have to have so many followers to do that. At that time, I didn't even have enough followers to go live. Okay. <laughs> That's how hilarious it is. And this was only a year, 22, like September of 20, no, August of 22 or something like that. And I share the video. We start going live on that platform, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. And I just worship Jesus. I don't go, I'm an artist. Check out my music. You know, I'm just like, (laughs) I'm worshiping Jesus, other people's stuff. Sometimes come Jesus, come in there, whatever. And I would share the gospel and I would just share my testimony. The one I just told you guys. And then I would just ask people one night. I said, Hey, do you want to give your life to Jesus? If so type, yes, put your first name. We want to pray with you and connect with you. And somebody said, yes. And I was like, Whoa. Like I tried, I tried to be cool. You know, I was like, yeah, wow, yay. Yes. And, uh, we prayed with them, connected them with the church. It was awesome. Next night, 10 people. Next night, 50 people. Since that time last year to today, we've had almost 37,000 people wow. come to Jesus. Wow. wow. And we've got moderators connecting with them and trying to get them connected to churches. Yeah. It's beyond me. Let's put it like that. That's that, amazing. Yeah. That's where you, but I never go, even on the lives, I go, don't follow me. Don't need you to. Don't need your email. Don't want you to buy anything. I just want you to come to Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to know what you look like fully alive? We had a high priestess witch get saved on Halloween night from Illinois on TikTok. I thought, this is a joke. It's not real. She drives all the way to Louisville, Kentucky a week later at a sold out event where we have like a thousand people and I get to baptize her. Oh, Uh, so what I'm saying is like, forget about songs, forget about justice. Great. Yeah. But there's this is a mission field, y'all. And when we go out there and we actually go, how do I not use this to build a brand, but actually see people come alive? Man, this next level. Yeah. I mean, for those who say, you know, TikTok and Instagram, like <laughs> there's a lot of stuff on there that's not great. Yep. Uh, sure. But you can still use it to reach people who are there where you can't reach anywhere right. else. And you're doing that. 37,000 people come to know Jesus because of your ministry. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'll say this. This probably get me in trouble, but. China could have my social security number. 37,000 people can get saved. <laughs> if a million people get saved, I'll move there. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about your book, your devotional, The God is Real. Book. Oh. Like, I know that's a, that's a book that you've written. and but Which, by me, the way, like, is probably full of typos and everything. But I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. Who cares? But, like... Uh, the God is real part to me like that. That feels like this is what you're trying to tell people because yeah. you had that experience yeah. where literally one night you're like, this is real. Mm-hmm. And it was so real to you that in an instant it changed your life. Mm-hmm. Like you say, you went from an addict to a completely different person right. because of this one experience. Mm-hmm. Is that the what you want people to experience through this book? Like what's the deal with that? Bro, honestly, we're going to blink. And this thing, mm-hmm. this life is going to be gone. Right? Yeah. We're going to be in the presence of God. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to live from that place where I'm fully 100% aware of that. So that I don't get caught up in all this stuff that's trying to sidetrack me. And I feel like the Lord's looking for a bride that's like that. Like a church, you know, people that don't just go to a thing on Sunday mm-hmm. and then go to lunch, but like he's real. And he's, <laughs> I don't know. It just blows my mind. Yeah. And I just want, I hope whatever little bit I can do to get people to just understand that very basic, but like earth shifting, <laughs> like truth. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. How would you encourage somebody that is struggling, whether it be shame or addiction and they're living there right now and things feel really hopeless? How would you encourage them? Oh. Uh, you know, one of the things I always say is like, the Lord is actually with you in that suffering sometimes. Like people just go, I shouldn't, I shouldn't grieve and I shouldn't feel all this stuff. Like, well, sometimes he's, he's with you in that. There's something he's doing in you through that. Right. But if it's pulling you away from him, that's a different, that's a different story. Right. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite verses is Philippians 2.13. And it says, it's God in you giving you the desire and the power to do the things that please him. That verse blows my mind because it says it's God in you giving you the desire. That's the want to that we don't have yet. And the power, that's his 
ability to do something that we don't have yet in us. <laughs> but the one thing he's asking is just for us to believe yeah. that he's in there doing that. And there's so much grace in that. Because sometimes I'll get on a stage and I'll be like, I don't want to be here. I'm not in a great place. And people start getting saved and the Lord's like, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give you a desire you don't have yet. I'm going to I'm going to give a power through you that you don't have without me. It's awesome. So even those people in that place, God still wants to work through you. He still wants to do stuff through you. You're not disqualified because you're hurting, you know? Yeah. And that takes the weight off. Mm -hmm. It's not about your performance. It's just about your willingness to allow God to work through you. Amen.